Welcome to the Capitalist Sage Podcast. We're here to bring you advice and tips from seasoned pros and experts to help you improve your business. I'm Carl Barr with Transworld Business Advisors, and my co-host is Rico Figliolini with Mighty Rockets Digital Marketing and the publisher of the Petri Corner Magazine. Hey, Rico, how you doing? Hey, Carl. Really good. Good. Why don't you introduce our sponsors today? Sure. I want to talk about Atlanta Tech Park, which is where this podcast studio is at. The founder here is Robin Benfey, an executive, former executive of AT&T, BlackBerry, and Samsung. And she created space here in the park, in Technology Park, that really works with a lot of the companies here, startups, and, and small companies that are growing, a variety of high-tech companies and um, firms that is in this new tech hub. So I want to say thank you to them for allowing us to be here. They do a lot of great workshops, a lot of great introductions. If you're a business that's small that wants to grow, this is a great place to be. CMX Cine Bistro, love that place. It's a, it's a luxury dinner and theater, movie theater concept that has a scratch kitchen. Does everything from scratch. Your entrees, your desserts, your cocktail drinks. They have over a dozen really unique cocktail drinks as well. Aimed at date night. So if you're, you know, there's no, uh, you have to be 21 and older to be there at 6 p.m. and after. Uh, great movies are playing. And this week is Toy Story 4. Yesterday, Annabelle comes home and Rocket Man. So check them out. They're going to be, you can go to cinebistro.com and you'll find out about what the show times are. You have to show up about 30 minutes before the movie and they'll take your order. No orders are delivered after the movie starts. It's a good concept. Um, Explore Gwinnett. They're the county's sort of tour, the, the county's tourism bureau, and mm-hmm. they introduce everyone to what's going on, not only here in Peace Records, but everywhere in Gwinnett County. Anything you want to do with for yourself, your family. We're a diverse county. They do things like um, these um, uh, soul, uh, the um, soul tour of uh, the Korean food, if you will. Mm-hmm. And um, they're, they have other things going on as well. So check them out, explorequinette.org. We've done the top 10 list with them. You can check that out at livinginpeacerecords.com. And last thing, I just want to thank Quinn. Uh, watch who's doing our cinematography if you will our director she's a, a Paul Duke STEM high school student and thanks Glenn for doing this excellent thanks thanks Rico sure. today I'm excited um, for our guest today um, Musa and Nicole Hassan co-owners of Bread and Butters Farm um, together they run a forward and futuristic farm um, if they're able to grow up to 85 percent more produce than, per square foot than conventional farming and they're doing that right here in the metro Atlanta areas and, and providing good, nutritious, yes. um, chemical-free and organic yes. um, foods to the, the local population here. So we want to welcome them here. And, and, and I'll start off by uh, letting you introduce yourselves a little bit. If, if you don't mind, I'll start with Nicole. Hey, um, I'm Nicole Hassan, the other half of Bread and Butter Farms. Um, background is pretty much I've always been the kid that played in the dirt. I've always been the kid that planted every seed from every fruit that I ate. Um, I come from a farming background. My family is originally from Alabama. We have quite a bit of land still there where we grew um, everything from cash crops up until like (coughs) just everything to support the household kind of thing. So I I come from a really self-sufficient family background and I was the only one out of four kids that (laughs) <laughs> that hung on to it. Um, my mother hated farming. She hated growing up on the farm. She didn't like it. I romanticized about her stories that she told me, and I told her I wanted to be a farmer when I grew up. So against her wishes, um, I became a farmer. Uh, she <laughs> loves it now, but to satisfy her and my father, I also did graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. So mm-hmm. I also applied that to with our farming techniques as well. Awesome, awesome. She loves it when it brings food, though. She does. <laughs> she does. So that's right. Good. That's right. Um, so uh, my name is Musa Hassan. Um, I'm the other uh, owner of Bread and Butter Farm. So um, I was raised on a farm. Um, I hated every bit of it um, until the time I was like 12. Moved away. Uh, went to the city, Atlanta. Um, went to Tuskegee University with a, a bachelor's degree in animal science, um, took on uh, a master's of cancer biology, and then from there we actually got into farming. Um, we started farming the way our grandparents farmed, the way our great-grandparents farmed. Um, we wanted to have control over our food and what we put in our bodies, so and so forth. So 
um, yeah, farming is just that, that vehicle for that. So um, we kind of took to it. And then, you know, we thought that we can kind of make a business out of it, you know. So uh, one thing led to the next. And now we actually have a farming business. So well, that's where we are. Yeah. That, that's fabulous. One of the interesting things I found is you both have backgrounds in science mm -hmm. and learned um, um, from kind of scientific methods and, and have careers that have been built uh, around that. Um, how did that help equip you to, to apply some of the things you've learned and how, you're, how you um, do farming today? Gotcha. Um, so, for example, uh, Kwane, she, used, she creates our... Um, Pest control. Pest control. Right? So I was just going to say that, like, my favorite subject, I didn't take, um, I needed, like, another science elective my senior year of college, and I took entomology. And I've also always had an affinity for insects, but my, my affinity was a love for them, not to kill them. So <laughs> entomology, they were just like, pest control, pest control. And I was kind of like, oh, like, this is disappointing. But now, <laughs> as a farmer, I appreciate it. So now I actually apply it, and I'm able to uh, make um, uh, all-natural pest control that we utilize right. and it has been like a game changer for for us yeah. from last year to this year when it comes to pest pressure yeah. mm. um, so not only does it get rid of pests but it also benefits the plants which is really really interesting that in that true. sense that it provides certain types of nutrients for us so but another way um, which you know we use compost tea so um, we create a really nice compost tea we have really nice microscopes we identify all the kind of microbes in the soils mm -hmm. and stuff like that so the bacteria the fungus the nematodes and things of that nature if the soil has those things you don't have to worry about putting anything in the plant because mm -hmm. the plant itself will defend itself against those things as well so mm -hmm. we just help them mm -hmm. with that kind of you know her all natural he does he does compost tea <laughs> we'll give him all the credit <laughs> he, he creates these huge barrels and they're aerating and everything and he'll say okay based on what he sees under a microscope, it's, it is too much, you know, it's a fungal environment. We need to make this more of a bacterial environment based on whatever crop we need to apply it to. Yeah. So, Rico, would you ever imagine that farmers today are using microscopes um, to help examine the soil? <laughs> no, I remember my father and his father and their farming in Italy. It wasn't quite like this. <laughs> Not sure. at all. Yeah. Yeah. His father looks at us like we're crazy. <laughs> um, but I love it. The, the, my science part of me loves yeah. the fact that you're that, that how you apply this to that. And there's a really huge benefit yeah. to your consumers and that. So tell me a little bit about how using these techniques and taking out some of the chemicals that are used in, in, in growing today, how does that help and improve the food that you're able to produce, both the yield and, and for the customers that are buying it? Yeah, it does help with the yield a lot because once you put chemicals in the soil, it really gets rid of the bacteria and stuff that's in there. Mm -hmm. So you have to con constantly put those things back into the soil. Okay. So you know, you, you really, once you get the soil right, you don't have to worry about adding those things. So number one, you can grow more produce per square foot. So we grow about 85% more than conventional farming in the same amount of space. So um, with that, that means that people who are buying the food, they get literally nutrient dense produce. So the produce tastes the way it should taste. So mm -hmm. it's like the yeah. first time I tasted like, you know, some real orange juice, I was like, ah, oh, this is poison, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we grew up on right, you something. know what I mean? So uh, we grew up on like Sunny D and all that kind of right. stuff like that. And then once you taste it <laughs> real, you know what I'm saying? You're like, what is this? But um, people are becoming more aware of what they're putting in their bodies. Yeah. And people are becoming more aware of the health benefits of what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, food is medicine, so we call it pharma yeah. pharmacy. Yeah. Yeah. What ends up happening, pharmacy yeah. so what ends up happening is the plants can pretty much reach out and get what they need. They know what they need. They know what they, they need to have. So if you just support the plants and provide them with that foundation by making sure they're not fertilized to death. So fertilizer will make them grow really fast, and they'll you'll get really big products. You'll get really big you know, whatever you're growing will grow really big, but it may be void of whatever nutrients it didn't get a chance to reach out and get from the root system and from the soil. You know, it's funny, I think, because when I go to the produce store, everything's either per piece, maybe, mm -hmm. but really per pound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the bigger you get it, the more water that's, that's in true. it, the more, like, yeah. other stuff you don't need, yeah. they make more money that way. Yeah. And it does taste 
different. I, when yeah. I was in Europe and the food I would taste of oh, yeah. a farm over there and taste that same yes. type of food here, yeah. very different. It tastes just like water. It is. Yes. Now, you can get really huge fruits and vegetables from organic farming, organically grown. Um, but it's it's good stuff. It's not yeah. just you know you can taste the difference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Well, if I if I can count every day when I'm out there talking to business owners, the amount of restaurants that mm -hmm. are that are trying to differentiate themselves mm -hmm. on the quality of their food, where they're sourcing their food, you're definitely in a space that's having a mega trend. And when you talk mm -hmm. about um, contamination in the food system and the food chain that yes. happened and. There was what three months where you couldn't get lettuce anywhere right. and, and things we like that. We had lettuce three months, three months. <laughs> but see, during those three months, you, you, you were affected by that. We were not. Romaine lettuce, right? Yeah, it was yeah. romaine. Yeah, yeah, last year. Look at that. Local yeah. farmers able to yes. produce lettuce when yeah. the rest of the country was yeah. running away from it. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised if you go to the CDC and you check out their website on recalls and all that stuff. It is a lot more than than is out there in the general yeah. mainstream. Yeah. Stuff so for business owners that are really looking to differentiate themselves on both quality, taste of their menus, how good it is, mm -hmm. and even protect themselves on their menu items that they're able to provide, really understanding and teaming up with local farmers is, 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 is a really key strategy for that. Mm -hmm. um, which, which, which led me to, 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 to ask a little bit about the business side now of farming, and, and I'm going to have to start with your husband and wife team, and I have a certain passion for husband and wife teams, um, and, and I'm wondering, how do you guys balance um, the business with, of, of the farm with the, with the business of the family? And, and I think uh, working lines, with... Lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm technically working with my homie, so I'm working with my friend, right? So that's number one. Number two, we both have a passion for what we're eating and providing food and trying to understand what we're putting in body. So um, from that standpoint, it's like, it's, it's just working with somebody you really, really care about that has the same vision as you, so it kind of aligns. And I think you know this because your wife just came in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, this is true. Um, you know, but then there's a separation and there's a reality when you run into problems in the household, per se, and then you have a business to run. So as long as you're grown and you're able to communicate and outline those mm -hmm. issues, separate those issues and deal with those issues as they come in, I mean, we haven't had any problems, thankfully. <laughs> so I haven't had one, I have zero problems when it comes to how we work together, what we're doing, and that's a business. So now, she comes from a Virgo type of world. <laughs> uh oh, he's pulling out. He's pulling out. Uh, so, and, you know, um, so she's extremely meticulous. But that is extremely uh, beneficial for a business standpoint. You know, you don't want a doctor working on you, and they're like, just, just zip them up. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be here for two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On yeah. Monday. Yeah. So you know, and for me, I'm like, let's get it done. Like, yeah. This is a huge project. Let's get it done. It doesn't matter if it takes all day. This is what I'm working on, and I'm focused on that. But you know, because of how meticulous everything is. She draws them out, she look at them, this is like what it is, it's very detail oriented. So, in the long run, it benefits tremendously the business when it comes to the business. Side. I think that's the only time that we've made kind of bump heads, it's not even bump heads, it was how we execute. Yeah. And I, when we both look at, okay, who has the most expertise in this, whatever we're facing? Right. And I'll just submit, or he'll just submit, and we'll say, okay, you do it, yeah. however, whatever way you want to do it. Um, I have a philosophy, there is no emotion in business. Um, it's time to run a business, and it doesn't matter if we had the worst argument of our life the night before, we're business partners right now. So yeah. we need to work and get it done. I, I love that there's so many so many business owners that are couples like that, and, and we find a lot of success with couples that are in business because of that dynamic. The same thing that works well in the family, mm -hmm. the strengths, the complementary strengths mm -hmm. are there applies in businesses and some business owners that don't have that balance there's just one leader and they don't have that person that fills in that they trust mm -hmm. their gaps or their weak spots mm -hmm. um they tend to have blind spots and they struggle more yeah. so i think that's a huge advantage and it also sounds like you guys sort of segment a little bit about mm -hmm. what you do mm -hmm. you know like you you have your tasks and what you're mm -hmm. needing to do 
and you have yours, and that's probably helpful in some ways. No? It, it, is. Is. it is. So I'm curious, have you have you put your kids to work in the Yes, so oh, that's yes. the other thing I was about to, to <laughs> tap into is because the kids get to see all of this, right? Yes. So this is becoming a culture for them. Yes. So seeing a business, being a part of a business, you know, they're coming up with ideas that are just like, oh, man, that is actually a really good idea, yeah. you know? So, which has forced us to take a look at their ideas and try to implement them from a farm standpoint and let them be a part of the business. How old are the kids? 10, 7, 6, and 3. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's really, really neat to see because I didn't see that growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, you just like, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to go to school, then I'm going to work some more, pay off this loan debt, and then keep working. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and I think that's where Startman came in. When we first decided to start the business, we knew how to grow and we know how to grow very well but the business part we didn't have any real experience mm -hmm. so um once we got into the start me which is the, the catalyst business program at emory and um so that helped tremendously before what we had going on mm -hmm. um so i would advise anybody to get part of that <laughs> so tell me a little bit as you're starting out a business and and, and looking for help mm -hmm. in in that part how did you find the Start Me program? And tell us a little bit about what that program is and how it helped you um, in launching your business. It was, um, I saw a post on Facebook. Yeah. It was a, um, some agricultural yes. page or somebody shared it. That's I want to say it was either Truly Living Well or somebody associated with them shared it on their page. And they had an info session. And she's saying like, okay, if you, you own a business or you want to start a business um, come to this info session to learn more about how to grow and start your mm -hmm. business um, we went to the info session in Tucker mm -hmm. and we liked what we heard we knew that like you said we had mastered one part of the business but we needed to master the financial mm -hmm. side of it because that seemed to be like a hole or a loop and we applied and they told us they were about numbers. We needed numbers. We needed to know how to you know, buckle down what we were spending, the accounting yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's exactly what they did. They, they really pulled our coattails on where's your money going? Yeah. What are you spending money on? What's going in? What's coming out? And with farming, if you love farming, which most farmers have to love it to do it, you get caught up and what's necessary for the plants, what's necessary for the soil. You don't necessarily think about your financial pocket like can you afford to do it that way is there another more financial cost more cost effective way to do it so I would like to ask mm -hmm. folks um, that are in business whether or not they're operating a nonprofit right and the reason I ask that because if you ask them do you know whether or not you made a profit <laughs> last month right. or you, you had positive cash flow and they can't answer the question there's a good chance they may be running a, a nonprofit without knowing it That's true. and so Understanding the, the financial techniques to measure and understand where you are financially in your business mm -hmm. is part of it to prevent you from being a nonprofit unintendedly and making a profit which you need to help generate, uh, make to help the business grow and, right. and, and serve your customer. Yeah. So, um, so it's starting to learn a little bit about the numbers. Anything else that 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 you that you would advise others that are going on that yes, this journey with times. you? Um, that you might have picked up from that program and mentorships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mentors. Um, that strong network yeah, that networking. you send out every single week. Yeah. And these are mentors that are business owners. They've been there, they've done it, and they all have some type of expertise yes. in some area. Yeah. And they actually match you up based on your business with mentors that can benefit you. Yeah. So I did like that part a lot. So um, having mentors, um, understanding numbers, are we losing money, are we making money, how can we make more money, the ideas that come from the tons of individuals that are in the room, the actual other business owners that are part I mean, of the, the networking, like you said. You know, so that was huge as well, um, because you, you do get a lot of ideas that you really wouldn't have thought about if mm -hmm. you were not. So we was thinking about starting another business. Starting start me again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so but that's how uh that's how good it was. Like it was a really good, you know, process. <laughs> I love it. Just go back again. Yeah, I yeah, love the entrepreneurial you know? yeah, so You can see the kids say, We're in start me next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're signing up. When we um when we started with our teas and our coffee. 
right? So yeah. we outline all those things that we wouldn't normally have thought about before. Before, it would be like, ah, let's go get some coffee. Let's go ahead and get, you know, roasted and do the things we was going to do with yeah. the same thing with the tea. Just, you know, let's just try it. Let's yeah, just yeah. Try it. But now, before we even got to that point, we were like, okay, how much does the roaster point. cost? Yeah. Mm. Where are we getting the beans? Where are we sourcing the beans? How are they grown? Yes. Are they biodynamically grown? Are they organic grown? All these kind of things like that. Shipping costs, all those things of that nature. And then we came up with a really nice price for the actual coffee. We put in our time, and boom, yes. it was like, this I'm makes curious, sense. I'm curious yes. about your pricing. So, <laughs> so when you came up with setting the price for the tea, mm -hmm. what were some of the factors and, and techniques you used to set that price? So the type of herb, right? Yeah. So a lot of the so a lot of the herbs like the ashwagandha, the go-to cola that we are growing. Yeah, right? so it depends on if we grew it or right. we have the sources. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So some things have to be from zone ten, zone nine that we wouldn't be able to to grow, but. If we have to source it, where it comes from, how it's grown, and then how much it costs to get over here, all that goes into there. And then the time it takes for us, if we have to dry it, and we have to mm -hmm. blend it with something else, mm -hmm. um, all those things go into the price as well. So you're getting like the tea leaves shipped to you, and then you do all the processing for exactly. them. Uh -huh. Except for the herbs that we ourselves grow and dry, mm -hmm. and put part of the tea, or the roots that we use here. So. And then whatever we can source local, so, so share with us a little bit about the products. We know you're farmers. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the products you produce and sell into the market? Give me, give us an example of. Um, we do who, the butters, right? Mm -hmm. You mean so, what we produce outside of produce, or no? Like how do you, how do you? Um, how about what's the major products? Major products that, you that you're selling yeah. into in, into the market. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the main things we sell is butter, right? Bread and butter. That's mm -hmm. initially because we are greedy, but... You know, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, right, right, right. So we was like, oh, we want to, you know, make bread and butter. And we've been making bread and butter for forever, right? Um, but then we want farming to be our bread and butter. So that's how we kind of got into that. But we also sell tons of bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's organic breads, organic butters. Um, and the butters are infused with byproducts from farms. So blueberries, for example, are dried and then placed into butter. Blueberry, the butter. blueberry yeah. butter. Yeah, so it's blueberry maple butter, and then, you know, of course, the garlic and herb butter, um, honey butter, things of that nature. So the same thing with the bread. So she makes chia breads. I don't even, I don't even want to call it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it's my, my new creation. Yeah. We haven't really, really named it yet. Uh, right. It's like the multi seed. Yeah. So do you have like baking facilities on property too? So we had to get, become a part of a, um, yeah. we had to be a part of a commercial kitchen. Oh, okay. So you searched out a kitchen and that, yeah. that goes into the price. Yes. Yeah, I would think. Because you have to go wherever you have to go for that, right? Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. So. so do you have all of this documented in a plan? Um, do, you, do you know where you are today? Do you know where you're going next? We do um, know where we're going next, um, but we have not because hemp is new to Georgia. As of you know, yeah. Brian finally came through. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, we have a very strong idea where we want to go when it comes to hemp mm -hmm. and all the things you can do with that. So um, we have the land already. We just kind of figure out, you know how are we going to utilize that whole plant from the building material to the oil to all those things mm -hmm. like that. So that's direction wise. Everything else is in the strategic plan and business plan. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the plants, the growing, as when it comes to the veggies and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the breads, the butter, oils, teas, coffee. So. And don't forget about my chicken. It's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, baby. Free range chickens. Right? Yeah. 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 So, all of that has been a part of what we're doing now, and we kind of developed that through the Start Me, right? So that was the benefit of the Start Me as well, because it helped, you know, get that business plan together. That's, you know. Did they help you also get financing in that too? Um, they do have. Uh, they have individuals that actually secrets. have a lot. Yeah. They have secrets, but then they also have micro loans yes. through Emory University yeah. that they offer with. Um, Startups as well. Oh, we, actually got, we, we actually uh, yeah. got, uh, we were a recipient. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I said, <laughs> do, do tell, do tell. Um, yeah. One of the one, the the way the program works, as I understand it, the the, the group, the collective, right. will vote on which businesses would get different different levels of grant levels on there based on the strength of their business plan, right. their pitches, their business model, the peers 
that are also in the program decide who and exactly. and mm -hmm. bread and butter farm were honored with with one of those grants yeah. so, so so we had, um we wanted to get the largest grant but we didn't we got half of that which is really good, really good still, yeah. but what it did was it forced us to kind of change how we're going to use those funds mm -hmm. what actually worked out because yeah. We was looking for a huge cooler, as you know, mm -hmm. um, with a cool bot, all that kind of stuff like that. But because, you know, she's a researcher <laughs> and, and, you know what I'm saying, she's focused, we were able to get this 24 cubic uh, foot chest freezer. Yes. And she ended up putting a... Uh, temperature controller on yes. it. Yes. And we dropped the temperature down to, yes. we can either go to like 32, 32. or we can go to like 40. Eight, if we yeah. have tomatoes, we can do 50. Right, so right. we can just adjust the temperature, and it's huge. Yeah, yeah. It is huge. So, and we so we have that one, then we have another five feet, five cubic feet. Oh, yeah, a little tiny one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but the, the thing about it is you can keep produce for like two weeks, mm -hmm. a week, you know, and it still mm -hmm. maintains its freshness, it still maintains those things. But what that does for us is we can clear a whole bed that's ready. Mm -hmm. Right, and then, or if there's some kind of pest pressure for some reason, or it's been raining and we haven't been able to get anything out of there, so the pest pressure is building up, and we have to harvest, we can harvest, and that produce is still good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that means we can also start a whole other bed, exactly, you know, exactly. and grow more produce. So, um, last year we made a certain amount, we've topped that already, yes. and we're already only midway, yeah. midway through so, the year. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fabulous, yeah, yeah. incredible, yeah, great, so, great job, great job. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit of, you know, what's next for the summer? So is this your heavy growing season? Is this your heavy, <laughs> yes. uh, I, I would guess that it is. And and so what do you have, what did Bread and Butter Farms have coming up over the next few months? Um, As far as veggies, we have, so we have a really nice market, a little barn market, which I love. Um, on Fridays from 4 to 8, it's like one of the best markets I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. And of course we have pop-up markets through Georgia Farmers Market Association, which I kind of dig. Um, there's another pop-up market next week on July the 6th on Covington Highway that we'll be at. We'll be selling all types of products. Um, it is uh, the CSA that's coming up in the fall. Mm -hmm. So we have fall CSA that's coming up. Which um, is Community Supported Agriculture. Yes. We learned that from Star Farm Share. Right? We, <laughs> have to, we have to define our acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a farm share. People buy into the farm. Well, exactly. people purchased farm shares, what, March? So well, yeah, spring, March, but then they, they also purchasing. start purchasing again June now, all the way out until July mm -hmm. for, for the fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the benefits to people that sign up for this are? We grow for them. We yes. grow veggies for them. Um, we grow a, a plethora of them, and then they pick those things up. And mm -hmm. that's like a, it's almost like a, one of those subscription freight exactly. services. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's weekly, right. they'll just get, they every week, they get their... Yeah. their now they can add on, they can add on breads, they can add on butters, they can add on the teas, the coffee, and of course the eggs. So yeah. better than Whole Foods? Or, <laughs> uh, what's that other the one? The pricing is or actually very, it's, it's lower than Whole Foods. The pricing is, is maybe a couple of, I mean, a couple of cents more, or less than. And it's been yeah. harvested the day before. Yeah, or right. the day of. Or the yeah, day of. Not a week ago. So it can't be that fresh, yes. organic, mm -hmm. zero chemical. Yeah. Mm -hmm that you can get um, weekly, local, local, supporting local businesses, mm -hmm. supporting local farmers. Yeah. Uh, um, how do people reach out and find you? How do we, how do we find out more about um, Bread and Butter Farms? Breadandbutterfarms.com, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go to Bread and Butter Farms. Um, I just finished coding and programming the website so you can purchase everything on the site. Yes. So you can purchase the weekly share, you can actually mm -hmm. add miscellaneous things to your cart as well and pay for everything through PayPal. Mm -hmm. And then, um, of course, Facebook, which is Bread and Butter Farmers, with an S. Um, Instagram, Bread and Butter Farmers as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought Facebook was just Bread and Butter Farms. That's it, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Bread and Butter Farms, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. Yeah. Um, then on, fa on Instagram is Bread and Butter Farmers. Oh, fabulous. fabulous. So absolutely, folks, reach out, learn more about what, what's, what's going on in the local yes. farming community here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, everyone talks about the film industry and what's going on here, but understanding. Yeah.
most of Georgia isn't in Atlanta <laughs> proper. <laughs> and even, even for those that do live here, there's people that are making a living and building a business out of farming yes. like we did um, um, 100, 200, 300 years ago and bringing science and technology to it to help build build up better products and better better produce for mm -hmm. for their customers so please do go check out bread and butter farms online and, and go to one of these uh farmers markets and, yes. and, and try yeah. some try some of the produce yes. out yeah. please so, yeah. well we'd like to thank um McCall and musa for for joining us today and helping share their uh advice with uh farming in in the metro Atlanta area and how organic farming is becoming um, a growing industry that people are be becoming successful for. Um, we'd also like to thank um, Atlanta Tech Park, um, one of our, we're hosting the Capital Sage podcast and, and definitely it's a cool place to check out if you want to be surrounded by entrepreneurs and yes. business people and exchange ideas. It's a great place to check out. Um, I'm Carl Barham with uh, Trans World Business Advisors of Atlanta Peachtree. And we, we work with a business owner in the business community, giving them advice on, on, on how they can grow their business as well as when they're ready to exit their business, the best ways to be able to sell and exit their business. So um, if, we, if, we, if we could ever help out, uh, feel free to reach out to um, Transworld Business Advisor of Atlanta, um, K Barham, B-A-R-H-A-M at T-World.com and, and we're, we're available for a consult um, for those. Enrico, of sure. course, um, tell us a little bit about what you've got going on coming up. Um, sure, um, lots of things going on. Um, Peach Recorders Magazine is going to be coming out the end of July. We're working on several features. So one of them is about the film and TV industry in the Peach Recorders city mm -hmm. and some of it maybe the surrounding area. Yeah. So it's a bit about that. So that's the cover story, most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, the next story that we're working on is about the Scouts, the Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the city, and uh, the churches and other groups that are involved with that. And uh, the third thing is that we are, well, two more things. We're a sponsor of uh, Light Up the Corners, mm -hmm. which is a big race. YMCA is doing that, so that's we're a sponsor of that. And we're a sponsor, we just became a media sponsor of Smart City Expo Atlanta, yeah, yeah. which is an offshoot, first time in North America, it's an offshoot of the Barcelona International Expo mm -hmm. uh, that's happening, and it's the P City of Peace Reporters, through Curio Curiosity Labs and Happy Street Reporters mm -hmm. is involved in that, so mm -hmm. all that stuff will be in the magazine, oh, so we'll look that. for that at the end of uh, July. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in to the Capitalist Sage podcast. And um, we're going to continue to bring you great guests, um, local business owners, people that are doing things in the business community, um, folks that can help you improve your business. So thank you for, for listening. And don't forget to, to, to tune in. You can find us on Peace Street Corners Live Facebook page. You should like the page. This way you find the live stream coming. Yep. Uh, Instagram, it's the same name. Uh, living in Peace Corners .com, you'll find the player. Uh, of course, you can find this on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio. I believe we just iTunes. got approved on that. Yep. Uh, Google Play, and wherever you find your podcast. Uh, well, so YouTube search. as well. Yes, YouTube channel is the Peace Corners Live channel, and you can watch that there too. So follow those, and you'll you'll be notified when there is a new episode. Thank you, everybody. Have a have a great day. So thanks, Thank guys. You.